you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin, and in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm talking about the end of everything as we know it. No more birds, no more trees, and perhaps most problematically of all, no more people. You have to put an end to her. Don't linger on the specifics. You have a job to do here. Just get in there and do what needs to be done. We're all counting on you. Look, you're already on the path that leads to the cabin. Why would you be here if it weren't to complete a very important task? You've made it this far, you might as well reach the end of your journey. While I appreciate the mental exercise, we are running up against a bit of a ticking clock. Nevertheless, let me assure you, the princess is locked up because she is dangerous. She is not dangerous because she's locked up. And before you decide to waste even more of our time by asking how I know that, let me suggest a more pragmatic lens through which to view this situation. Causality doesn't matter here, because the end result is the same no matter what led us up to this point. If the princess leaves the cabin, the world will end, and there is no changing that. It's no use arguing semantics over a metaphorical chicken or egg, because the egg is hatched and it's about to ruin everything. Unless, of course, you do your job and slay her. Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Oh, if only that were the case, but I don't make the rules. I have to say, I'm surprised at your reluctance thus far, but unfortunately for the both of us, you're the only one who can pull this off. Like I said, I don't make the rules, no matter how much I wish I did. Of course I haven't. Why would I even consider that? Nobody wants the world to end. I mean, Maybe some people do, like nihilists, or very, very evil people, but surely you're not one of those, right? Are you serious? No, you have to do it. Yes, but you'll have to slay her before you get it. It's a secret, but I think you'll like it. It's a special reward, just for you. And whatever you think it might be, I can promise you it's going to be even better than your wildest imagination. Then I guess we'll just have to see what happens, but a word of warning. If you go in prepared to hear her out, she could easily trap you in her web of lies. And the more you listen to her honeyed words, the harder it'll be to pull yourself out. Then each and every one of us is doomed. So sure, go, talk to her. See how that turns out for all of us. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about.
the interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp, a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. Her voice softly carries up the stairs. Hello? Is someone there? It's hypnotising. It's the kind of voice you only have to hear once to remember it for the rest of your life. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. You're playing a dangerous game by coming here unarmed. Don't be a stranger. It's been so long since I've had any visitors. Please, come downstairs. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's beautiful. How could someone like this be a threat to anyone? I am begging you to stay focused. There's a lot riding on you here. Hi. Do you think you can get me out of these chains? Okay. Oh. She pauses, carefully formulating her words before she responds. You can address me as your royal highness, or you can just call me princess if your royal highness is too formal. Is princess her name or her title? What if it's both? Could you imagine being named Princess Princess? Like I said, you can call me Princess if you'd like. I'm sorry, I've been down here so long I guess I've just forgotten. I must have a name though. Everyone has a name. Okay, that's weird. She hadn't even thought to pick a name for herself. Hopefully you're starting to see that she can't be trusted. Go back upstairs, get the blade and slay her before it's too late. I don't see what that has to do with anything. This is the only time this is ever going to happen, but I agree with the princess. That's hardly relevant. Okay, but actually, what has she been eating? She has to eat, right? The princess hesitates before responding. She doesn't know. She's been down here too long to have any idea of what she'd do in another life. She knows what she'd do. She's just searching for whatever answer she thinks you want to hear. Are you looking for the truth, or are you looking for the right answer? Because with the dynamic we have going on here, I don't think the specifics of what I do really matter. It's not like you'd believe me. It, 
Is that why they threw me down here? But I don't want to hurt anyone. I, I like the world, I think. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here for so long. That's... How long has she been locked away? Did they tell you how I'm supposed to end the world? I don't know how to destroy the world, if that's what you're getting at. I believe her. She doesn't have to know how to destroy the world to be capable of doing it. At the end of the day, whatever the two of us have going on down here is about trust. Whoever sent you to slay me claimed I was a threat to the world, but they didn't tell you why. I don't trust that. And I don't think you do either, or you wouldn't have come down here to talk. She has a point. We're talking like this for a reason. So this shouldn't be about what I'd do if I got out of here, or me saying the right thing to convince you to save me. This is about how messed up this whole situation is. This is my life we're talking about. Do you really think I can even end the world? Why would I even want to? We both know that if there's people we can't trust in this situation, it's whoever locked me down here, and it's whoever sent you here, and those two groups are probably one and the same. Don't let her turn the tables here. This isn't about trust. This is about risk. We stand to lose everything, all for the sake of one person, and a subjugating monarch, no less. Thank you. You turn back to the stairs, intent on retrieving the blade in the cabin. You'll regret this. I promise you. But go ahead. Run along and get whatever you're planning to get. But you'd better hope that I don't slip these chains before you make it back down here. Slip these chains? She can't, right? She needed our help to get out of here. But do you hear the conviction in her voice? I don't think she's bluffing. She has to be bluffing, but hurry. You rush up to the first floor, grabbing the blade, both yours and the world's only possible salvation. Okay, if we're sure about this decision, I'll support it. I suppose we have a world to save after all. You slowly creep down the basement stairs. It's quiet. Where the princess sat only a moment ago, there's only a severed arm, its cooling flesh still chained to the wall, and she is nowhere to be seen. Is it just me, or did this room get a lot bigger? Oh, you coward! No, I don't think we can. Why don't you come closer? I have something to show you. Your eyes dart to the corners of the room. You don't see her. Where is she? You close the door behind you. Almost magically, its locks immediately click into place. Maybe they'll open if you finish the job. Oh, do you want to play a waiting game? 
I've been down here a long, long time. I'm very good at waiting. But eventually, exhaustion starts to set in. Come on, wake up. We can't fall asleep down here. You wait for as long as you can, pushing yourself to stay awake and stay vigilant. But you can't outwait someone who's been waiting for as long as she remembers. You barely even realize that you've started to drift off. Pain tears you from your sleep. The princess is upon you, ripping into your flesh, unnaturally sharp teeth and claws severing arteries and digging into organs. There's nothing to be done. You're already half gone. It can't just end like this, right? As much as I'd prefer for things to have gone differently, I can't deny the reality of what's happened. I'm sorry, but it's over. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. It hasn't. Or, if it has, I certainly haven't been a part of it. We've just met for the first time, you and I. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. If he doesn't remember what happened, then something else must have trapped us here. You're not trapped here. Nobody's forcing you to do anything, though the only sensible thing for you to do right now is march up to that cabin and slay the princess. Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. We did our best with the information we were given. And yet you still died, didn't you? So, great, congratulations, you've been given another chance to actually do this right. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, Oh, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We were killed by the princess and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything, just like I told you she would? All the more reason to keep our wits about us, should we even return to the cabin. We could find a safe little hole somewhere instead. You have to go to the cabin. If you don't slay the princess, she's going to end the world, which you're always going to be a part of, even if you're cowering in a hole. There's no escaping your responsibility here. Just be quick about it. She just can. Believe me, I wish I could tell you more, but you'll just have to trust that what I'm saying is true, and that, despite it all, you're fully up to the task that's been given to you. People locked her in that basement, and I told you what this place is. It's a path in the woods. Don't overcomplicate things. Look, 
I'm not supposed to say this, but it's because you're special. You're the only person capable of doing this. Call it a prophecy, if that helps, but it's just the way things are. Oh, I didn't know we were special. But special can mean all sorts of things. Don't let it make you careless. We need clear thoughts and pricked ears. I've told you everything you need to know. Going into more detail would just overcomplicate an otherwise very simple situation and make your job more difficult. If you want us to stand a chance against her, we need to be armed with information. What is she really capable of? How are we supposed to stop her? Not to sound like a broken record, but the less you know about her, the better things will go for all of us. I know it sounds like I'm hiding something, but you're just going to have to take me at my word. You're afraid, aren't you? Just like us. Of course I'm afraid. Fear is an extremely normal thing to feel when the fate of the entire world is at stake. But that's not the only thing you're afraid of. You're scared of something worse. Stop projecting your neuroses onto me and just get to the cabin already. Like I said, if she killed you, it was probably because you didn't listen to me. Don't talk to her, don't trust her, just go in, do your job, and save the world. Great. Now, if you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. I don't see why that matters. A lie's a lie, and if anything, she's the one who's cornered. She could have gotten out of there whenever she wanted to. We should trust nothing that she tells us, only what we hear and smell. That's a very roundabout way of saying that you should listen to me and take this seriously. Maybe. The interior of the cabin is ruinous and dilapidated. It feels like no one has lived here for a long time, wind rushing in through cracks and holes in the wooden walls. The only furniture of note is a termite-eaten table with a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Very different. I wonder why. Maybe that's because you haven't actually been here. I hope this means you'll finally drop that ridiculous past life nonsense. You haven't died, and you certainly haven't been killed by the princess. So focus up. A lot's riding on this. That's because there isn't a mirror. There's a table, the, the blade sitting on the table, and the door to the basement. There's nothing else in here. There's definitely a mirror. There isn't. What a strange thing to lie about. Maybe he doesn't see it. Much like he hasn't seen what's already happened. Exactly. Why would I lie about something so meaningless? What good would a mirror even do? Let you waste time preening yourself instead of doing what needs to be done? You take the blade from the table. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. You walk up to the wall next to the basement door. It's a wall. There isn't much to see here. This really isn't funny. You reach forward and rub your hand against the cabin wall. I hope you know how ridiculous you look right now. 
but it was there a second ago, and now it's gone. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing what's left of an old wooden staircase. It's still sturdy enough that you can make your way down in one piece, though you'll have to be mindful of holes. The air seeping up from below is oddly warm and wet, as if you're descending into a jungle. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. She growls up the stairs. I can smell you. She sounds almost feral, impatient, or maybe eager. You carefully make your way down the stairs. The last step gives way to the damp earth floor of a starlit pit. The walls are obscured by an impenetrable darkness, giving the illusion that the room might stretch on forever. You brush against the wide leaves of plants that surround you on all sides, seemingly the only living things that occupy this strange underground wilderness. The jungle is pressing in on us, hiding her from view. She could be anywhere. You see only a flash of the princess before she scurries away into the underbrush, dragging her heavy chain behind her. Remember, she's just a princess. She is certainly not just a princess. You're not helping. It doesn't matter what she is. It only matters what she does. Her shining eyes appear between the leaves, staring hungrily at you from the darkness. I can hear your heart pounding from the bottom of the stairs, fledgling. You're right to be terrified. I'm so much more than you. And a little splinter clutched in trembling hands won't save you from me. A shiver rushes up your spine and pulls you upright. The air's shifting. She's getting ready to pounce. Move, now. a direction on instinct. As you land, you're buffeted by a gust of air disturbed by the sudden motion of a massive body. The princess. In an instant, she's pounced on the spot where you would have been, her chains rattling across the floor behind her. Before you can blink, she's gone, vanishing once more into the shadows. But you still feel her gaze on you. You're faster than you were before, but you're still meek, reactive. Pray. You whirl around to find her, and your gaze meets hers, a pair of shining eyes peering out at you from just beyond the basement stairs. So she's cut off our escape. Shit. What do we do? I want to swallow you whole, and I will get what I want. You have no exit. You have no hope. You live and die by my whims, and my whims alone. Don't ask her what she wants, just slay her. Is that all the advice you have? We don't even know what she looks like. Some specifics would be very helpful. She's just a princess. Don't overthink it. She is clearly not. Why does anything kill anything else? She needs to. I didn't say I wanted to kill you. It sounds like she wants to do something even worse. What she wants only matters if she wins, and you're not going to let that happen. She's coiling for another strike. Be somewhere else. We're on the back foot. The back foot keeps us nimble, keeps us alive. It doesn't matter if it keeps us alive if it eventually kills us. We need to take back the momentum. We need to do something. This isn't going to work. 
We're in her domain. We just have to stay alive. If we keep dodging her forever, we're going to get tired. We're going to slip up. We have to take a risk. As the princess lunges from the shadows once more, the titan will become the blade and lash out. It strikes, cutting deep, and the princess loses her focus, crying out in pained surprise as she crashes into you. Your sense sprawling, and can already feel the massive bruise blossoming on your ribs as she scrambles back into the darkness. Ha! Look at that! We wounded her! And she wounded us. Bad trade. That hurt. Are you just the cornered animal you seem to be? Or could you be a rival? She rears back, then leaps at you, more forceful, more ferocious, more serious. The scuffle is brief, and though you inflict a few deep wounds, you find yourself quickly overwhelmed by her savagery. You collapse to the floor, and she wastes no time before pouncing on you in a flurry of claws and blood, your nerves barely able to keep up with the onslaught. By the end, you're lying in a nest of your own intestines, spine severed, blood rapidly draining out onto the jungle floor. The princess, drenched in both her blood and yours, idly prods your body. No, that's it then. Cornered animal it was. Do better next time. I still need to devour you. And it doesn't count if you're dead. We're not dead, we're... But you don't have time to protest her premature observation of your death, because everything goes dark, and you die. You're on a path in the wo- Yeah, we are. And this time we're not gonna run until we die. We're taking her head on and we're winning. You felt her. She didn't have a soft underbelly. She didn't have blind spots. What could we have done that would have saved us from her hunger? When someone tries to make you dead, you have to hit them back. You have to show them your authority. There's nothing worse than a bully that thinks they own you. Great, so you've been here before. That doesn't bode well. You're not supposed to have been here before. This is supposed to be one and done. Oh, shut up. It bodes fine. You're the reason we're stuck in this shit situation. Now I have to do the hard work of dragging us out. And how do you intend to do that? We're going to fight her, and we're going to win. There's a reason she slinks around in the shadows. Well, no complaints here. Now hold on, we're not just going to let the fact that he knows things about this whole Lupin situation go, are we? He's not important, he can have his secrets for all I care. She's killed us twice now, and that's enough of a reason for us to want her dead. Like I said, we're going to fight her. But we're so small. We don't actually know how big she is. We just know she wants us to think she's big. And if she's going to treat us like prey again, then she is sorely underestimating us. One good wallop. That's all we need to put her on the defensive. Ground is ground. It doesn't matter what shape it takes. We'll adapt. If it looks different, that's because the situation has started to spiral out of everyone's control. So please, disavow yourself of the notion that you can just come back here and fix this place if you manage to make a mess before that line of thinking leaves you yet another world in ruin. Though, as evidenced by you dying twice, it's safe to assume the fates of the worlds you've left behind don't concern you very much. Consider this your last opportunity to make things right, for you and for the rest of existence especially for you. We don't need your pep talk. I'll make sure we pull this off. I've told you as much as I can without putting you at a disadvantage. If anything, I've told you too much. Like that grumbling voice said just a moment ago, you've already died by her hands twice. You shouldn't need much else in the way of motivation. Yeah, she was still there last time. 
I'm not so sure she can free herself without our help. Maybe not quickly, but it's inevitable that cabin won't last forever. You make your way down to the cabin. Your fated confrontation awaits. You know what to do. We've already been over the plan. I'm not sure that Yu's violence counts as a plan. It's a better plan than you had last time. I don't like this. Don't try to keep us breathing. The interior is dark and overgrown. Vines and brush obscure so much of the place that had you not seen the exterior, you might not have noticed this was a cabin at all. The only furniture of note, if you could call it that, is a knotted stump, a pristine blade embedded in its exposed rings. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you're going to do this right. Take it. We're not fighting a monster without a blade. Even if it's not a very big one. Great. That mirror's back. And it's where the door is supposed to be. What are you talking about? There is no mirror. It's just the stump and a narrow tunnel that leads to the basement. He isn't tricking us. Can you feel the wind? It's telling us there's a hole in that wall. Our eyes deceive us. If that mirror's blocking our way, just smash it and be done with it. Yes, take the steel claw. You pull the blade from the stump, gripping it tight. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good. One step closer to ending this. You step forward, approaching the small hole that leads to the basement, hesitating before you enter the princess's lair. You heard him. Stop hesitating and smash that antique. That mirror isn't part of this place. It's seeped through from somewhere else. It, if there even is an it, is a hallucination. Like you said, you've been here twice before. Your mind was bound to start playing tricks on you eventually. It went away after we reached out to it last time. Might as well try wiping it clean again. What's the arm? You bring your fist crashing down into the open hole leading to the basement, throwing yourself off balance and tumbling headlong into the pitch black. If there were once stairs leading into the basement, there is nothing left to attest to their existence now. There is only a long tunnel of packed earth, growing more narrow as you descend. It smells of mould and decay. The damp walls leave streaks of dirt along your body as you're forced to hunch, then finally squat down on all fours in order to continue. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favour. As you crawl forward on hands and knees, you're met only with the sounds of ambient earth. No voice slinks confidently up the stairs, no entity threatens violence or pleads for safety. Stay quiet. Don't give her a sound. The princess leaves your remark unanswered. See? She knows. We have to be like her. Focused. Present. Patient. We're past the point of words anyway. This is a conversation that can only be had with hard steel and sharp teeth. You put the voices to the back of your mind and proceed down the stairs. The basement is dark and cavernous, a gaping maw threatening to swallow you whole. There is no light here, save for what little starlight has managed to filter down the tunnel. And though you can't see the vastness of the space, you can feel it. You're exposed. It doesn't matter if we can't see down here. We know where she is. You step into the shadows and are enveloped in total darkness. Your heart pounds in your chest, ears pricked, eyes wide despite the inky blackness, waiting for any sign of movement. There, she's about to strike. With the near silence of a determined predator, the princess erupts from the shadows. You're quick to react, swinging your blade, its tip intercepting her before she can draw first blood. 
She recoils, stunned for a brief moment. See? I told you. We needed to assert our might. We needed to prove to her that she can bleed too. She'll doubt her every move now. Her gleaming eyes watch you from the shadows, unblinking. There's fear in them now, but it is a fear wreathed in fury, and beneath it all lurks something far more primal. Hunger. Yes, she knows your strength now, and she wishes to devour it. How unseemly. I'd like to see her try. The princess lunges with even more ferocity than before. Both voices were right. Within that ferocity there is the clumsiness of doubt, a chaotic dance between impulse and restraint. Not a word is spoken between you and the princess as you exchange blows in the dark, the glint of bloody claws and fangs, the flash of wet steel. In the pit, all of your senses are heightened, each injury stinging like a chorus of insects, each small shift in your favour a major victory that swells your confidence. And yet, for all the wounds you've managed to inflict upon her, you remain at a stalemate. And then you start to lose ground. While your body slows, hers quickens, her wounds mending as she licks the blood of her prey from her dripping maw. So she really can devour our strength. Can we do something like that? All these wounds are starting to add up. Nah, screw that. We're not stooping to her level. We'll just have to give this our all, end it in one final hit. We die if we do that. We have to make ourselves like her. We have to embrace instinct. She shifts towards you, her bloody grin shining in the dark. And then you see it. Your opening. Take it! Put her down like the mindless beast she is! You hurl yourself towards the princess, your movement too quick, too bold for her to intercept. You bury your blade deep in her chest. Yes, yes, we're going out in a blaze of glory. Nature doesn't have glory. This is just death. She howls in pain, retaliating with claws and teeth, desperately tearing, trying to devour you to make herself whole once again. Chunks of your flesh are torn away, feathers and blood and bits of gore splattering to the ground. But your work is already done. No sating of her ravenous hunger will be enough to mend her now. Though her flesh begins to seal itself around you, she cannot remove your blade from her heart. You and the princess collapse to the floor together, your bodies fused, entwined in a bloody mass of limbs and teeth. I wouldn't have it any other way. As the two of you fade, a new emotion creeps into the princess's eyes. Something akin to shame. What have we done? They ask. I guess that's it. At least we saved the world. Right? Right? He's gone. Everything is gone, except her. And us. It doesn't matter. We won. She's gone. Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? You're right. She's gone. It's just us and that awful thing. It's like it's mocking us. Let's just stay still. He is. 
Does that mean the world ended? It hasn't ended. We're still here. The world didn't end. We're still here. Come on. We just need to keep going. There's something dreadful about it. I, I don't think you should. That thing reeks of death. Screw the mirror. We just need to find the princess. I'm begging you, don't do this. It's different now. It feels... I don't know. Final. Something finds me in the long quiet and brings me the gift of a fragile vessel. Yes. Nerves and fibers to feel the world's beyond. Perspectives to make my own. This one is consumed by instinct. A dancer moving to the rhythm of the flesh. She will make for a ravenous heart. She wishes me to devour you. To make you a part of myself. But she is only a voice. Do not mourn her, for she is part of something greater. I am solitary lights in an empty city. What are you? Thoughts without connections, a dim and nascent network. I wish to be more. I think that you are like me. We are oceans reduced to shallow creeks. She is part of me, and part of me is her. You speak in circles. Does it matter where one thing begins and another ends? You are the only thing I have ever known. The space we're in is vacant. Nothing comes here but us. You are familiar, but you are not me. I feel sadness, longing, hope as I witness you. I know only that they are. Nothing as we are, but I know that there are worlds beyond us and that we are meant to reach them. There is no exit, but this vessel is a creature of perception. She can make you forget, if only you believe her to be able to. Bring me more perspectives 
so that I may be whole, and perhaps then we will know our freedom. You ask of things that cannot be done. To destroy is merely to reshape, to remold. How can I know? I am flickers in something sprawling and unilluminated. Then we will be here forever, as we are now, unfinished, dry, hollow. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't.